preparing for the second Sunday of Easter, which is also the Feast of Divine Mercy. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written, that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So imagine you were like riding bicycles with your friends, you know, somewhere in... You know, and then one of you falls off, right? And then everyone else just keeps going, like, oh, well, good luck. He's on his own. And then later on, you come and you see him again, and you're like, oh, geez, now we feel kind of bad. Because, you know, we were all riding, having fun, and then he kind of fell off, scraped himself up all this, and, and we just kind of, like, left him there on his own. And imagine if what he said to you at that time was like, hey, look, I scraped up my hands, but peace be with you. Peace be with you. That's pretty much what Jesus was doing here. This is the evening of Sunday, of Easter Sunday, when Jesus comes into the room where all of his disciples were. And all of his disciples had kind of like, except for John, had kind of uh, taken off, had run away, and left Jesus to go and suffer the, the cross, the persecution, and the death on Calvary there on his own. And when Jesus comes back, he knows that they remember this failure. They remember like backing away and leaving him to be carried off. And so what does he say to them first? Because he knows that they're kind of anxious and they feel kind of bad. He says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. But Jesus doesn't say, oh, no problem, no big deal. He shows them, look, hey, here are the scars. Here are here in my hands and my feet, here in my side. Here are the wounds that the, that the nails left there on Good Friday. So Jesus never pretends not to have been hurt. He always shows his disciples, look, I suffered this. I suffered this because of your sins and because of the sins of the world. And more immediately because of like your own running away and because of the betrayal of Judas, one of our company. So, But, Ju but Jesus never pretends that that didn't hurt. Instead, he shows his hands and his side and he says, look, here are the scars that were healed by God, by God's grace in the resurrection. And then he says again, peace be with you. What does Jesus do? Finally then he says, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. So he says it to all of us. He says, okay, look, I live this life, this death, this resurrection, because I was the one sent by God to do that. Now, if you want to be one of my followers, prepare to live the same kind of life, the same death, the same resurrection. Prepare, in other words, to bear the same kinds of wounds in your hands and in your heart that I myself bore. And because he knows that we need to be strengthened for that, he breathes the Holy Spirit. And he says, receive the Holy Spirit. 
whose sins you forgive are forgiven, and whose sins you retain are retained. He gives his disciples the ability to forgive the sins of all those who will come to them. So he equips them, in other words, to live out that death and resurrection that he has sent them to. So we ourselves, as the followers of Jesus today, are prepared to be sent. We come to the Mass every week, every Sunday, and the deacon or the priest sends us forth to do what? To go and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. To proclaim the fact that Jesus died and was risen. And to take whatever the wounds and the scars are that the world is going to inflict on us. Because we know that God's Holy Spirit is within us. Working within us, giving us strength, helping us to maintain firm in our faith and our profession of our faith in Jesus. And we know that whatever happens, Christ will always be with us to strengthen us and to whisper to us those words, peace be with you. Amen.